This is a, this is a profile that was done at this site uh, on August 23rd. Um, so it's pretty recent data. And um, um, all the little squares are the individual ports on these multi-level samplers. And what you can see is the specific conductance here, which is just a measure of the total ionic strength in the water. So it's a general measure of inorganics contamination would be one way to think of it. Uh, shows you very low conductances at the top. That's the rainwater, very low, 50. Uh, to give you a perspective, distilled water would be about one or two, commercial distilled water. Um, probably the water you get out of the tap at the Parsons lab is probably three or 400 because they add things to the water and seawater is up around 60,000, just to give you some sense. So you can see the plume. Can you see it pretty clearly right there, that elevated zone right in here? And then down below the plume. Go down here to dissolved oxygen, and you can see, again, high dissolved oxygen shallow, high dissolved oxygen below the plume, zero right in the plume. And then on the right is iron, dissolved iron. Okay, when you get, when the plume goes anaerobic, when the redox potential gets low enough, you can actually begin to change the iron from iron three, ferric iron, which is what makes the sediment brown, rust, to ferrous iron, iron two, which is soluble in water. And you begin to see iron in the core of the plume. So when the, in the very core of the plume, it's not only oxygen free, zero anaerobic, but it's actually reducing enough that you begin to get dissolution of iron off the sediments. All right? And those transitions are very, very, very sharp. I've got a port right here and a port right there I've circled. You can see one has high iron and one has no iron. And that's right about where you'd have high DO and no DO. Does that make sense? Okay. And those are, I think, the two ports I picked 10 feet apart in the vertical. Or maybe even less. Something like 10 feet apart in the vertical. And those are the two that are pumping right now. Let's come in a little closer. Oh, you already have that done. Um, what we do is we do a lot of field kit analysis. Uh, I won't do this today, it's not worth it. Just using a, a colorimetric uh, field kits with, spect with a spectrophotometer that actually uses the color that comes up from the reaction to give you a concentration measurement right in the field. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing this right now, but because um, the, the sites I picked are pretty obvious. Um, first, I'm going to do dissolved oxygen here. Yep. Okay, I'm going to sample the deeper of the two first which is the red tape. Of course, this never works, so you'll have to forgive me when I go, ah, well, next time. Now, you notice I'm not wearing gloves or anything else. You know, I wouldn't drink it, but it probably wouldn't hurt you at all. You have the wrong one? There we go, just take one. These are little vacuum vials uh, made by a company called Cometrix. Um, the reagents are inside already, see them? And they're under a vacuum, so it sucks the right amount of water in. Okay, so I'm pumping the water up here, and there's a little thing on there you can catch and you break the tip. And if there's dissolved oxygen, I used a really low sensitivity range, so uh, this, this one, if I put in the photometer, would be over range for this kit. I just tell you, there's about three or four milligrams per liter of DO based on your plot in this one here, okay? Pretty obvious. Um, there's different commits that allow you to do different ranges. Uh, I just picked a, a really low one. Now I'm going to do the purple tape, which is just a few feet above that zone. Now you're going to remember that that red one, if you look at your plot, is below the plume, right? So that water originated from somewhere up on the base north of the sewage plant and traveled underneath the, the plume to get here. So that water is probably pretty old. Now I'm going to go um, above that, and if I'm lucky, it's like the Museum of Science, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so that would be a, probably a zero dissolved oxygen. So you have these very, very steep concentration gradients uh, over very short distances, right? Now we're going to flip it in reverse. I'm in the zero DO zone right now. This is an iron commit, dissolved iron commit. And if we're lucky, this actually goes to a little tank about a foot down. <laughs> okay, so that's dissolved iron. Yeah, there's one other. Who's got the... Who's got the... Uh, so there we go. Usually we put a piece of tape on both so we can tell. <laughs> oh, beautiful. 
Okay. So, whoopee, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it works much better with grammar school kids. <laughs> they actually get excited about it. Woo! Uh, so, um, anyways, um, that just gives you some sense of, uh, of, of the kinds of uh, detail that we can see uh, when we do this kind of sampling. Um, We've taken tremendous advantage of this uh, in a series of uh, studies that have been done to look at the microbial and geochemical reactions that are giving us these concentration gradients. And uh, also we've taken advantage of it in some tracer experiments we'll talk about a little bit later. Because what's neat about this place here is you have essentially a uniform material, the sands and gravels, and you have different geochemical zones created by this plume. So if you're interested in knowing about transport of bacteria or whatever else, and you want to know how they might be affected by the geochemical environment, you can come out here and run tests in different zones, and it's all the same material, but just different geochemistries. Does that make sense? So.